Welcome to the show. I'm St. Brian. The Pacific Northwest has the largest number of Sasquatch sightings in the world. If you want to search for Squatch but don't know where to start, we've got you covered. From the mountains to the city to even a coffee shop, these are the best spots for Sasquatch sightseeing in Western Washington. Here in the Skagit Valley, there's something big afoot. Yeah, this is very bizarre. <laughs> A place filled with cryptic cryptids. Man, every piece in here has its own story. Built by a man who loves a mystery. There are many theories on Sasquatch. I lean real heavily towards feral or wild human beings myself. A decade ago, Michael Vale was looking for a suitable retirement plan. And I didn't want a conventional job, so it's like, I'm just gonna have a, a Bigfoot museum. The electric sign maker thought he'd take advantage of all the traffic zipping by his home on the North Cascade Highway. There's thousands of cars every day that drive by here. They like to come in and feed on the knowledge of Skagit Squatch. It's free and um, it's family friendly. The chainsaw carver has filled his museum with hundreds of pieces of Bigfoot inspired art and artifacts. A face totem that I carved. You can look in any direction and just your mind can just wander. My museum is majority art an art museum because there is a huge lack of evidence when it comes to Sasquatch and Bigfoot. But he has gotten his hands on a very impressive foot. This is a Bigfoot print from out on the Olympic Peninsula. He once had a brief meetup with the big guy himself. Well, this is real similar to my Sasquatch encounter. And when visitors bring their own Squatch stories, the curator carefully documents them. This is my journal that I've been acquiring for about six years now. It's a collection of over 300 Bigfoot stories. Someday I hope to produce this into a, a movie or a book of some sort. But this museum, like its founder, has a sense of humor. Looks like someone's getting ready to have Bigfoot for dinner. Yeah. Mike's wife, Peggy, provides some impressive artwork of her own. This is one of my wife's paintings that I love. And she helps her hairy husband follow his passion. Go get him, dude. <laughs> A roadside stop where you're guaranteed to spot Bigfoot and even bigger smiles. It's so fun. Thousands have searched the Pacific Northwest wilderness for the creature known as Bigfoot, hoping to catch sight of it. I'm Bigfoot Bay. Well, now she's on TikTok, so it's a whole lot easier to find her. Bigfoot Bay, that's B-A-E, has been hiding in the woods for years. She's an introvert, give her a break. But then the pandemic brought her out. During quarantine, I was really bored and I got online. This is the 21st century, people. She got tired of being just a grainy figure in people's photos. Bigfoot Bay has big moves and big dreams. I said, after a year, I want to have 10,000 followers. Thanks to her stellar dancing she displays in various Washington locations, she's far surpassed that. With more than half a million followers on TikTok and more than 100,000 on Instagram, a lot of people comment telling me to watch out for hunters, <laughs> which is great advice. I appreciate that. Don't worry. She keeps her identity and location a secret, so those pesky Bigfoot enthusiasts don't pester her. But even so, she's always happy to say hi to a fan. I mean, can we have a picture? Yeah, of course. <laughs> hey, I'm Bigfoot Bay. <laughs> Bigfoot Bay means it's the Bigfoot we all love but just a little sassy, a little fun, a little bit herself. This legendary lady is finally ready to come out from the shadows and strut her stuff online. I'm only just beginning and I can't wait to make more content. And as for whether or not we'll find more about this mysterious Squatch's identity, she's been hiding in the woods for like thousands of years. Baby steps, people.
We're going to the Yeti. <laughs> There's a Yeti at the top of Mission Ridge, or a Sasquatch. It depends on the weather. Uh, sometimes he's this way. Sometimes he's the big fat Yeti, and sometimes he melts off and becomes a nice rusty brown uh, Sasquatch. Zeb Postelweight and his wife Casey Koski visit him a lot. You might say he's their big baby. A little bit. We definitely want to take care of him and make sure he stays up here for a good long time. These two, along with their friend Thad Brewer, are this creature's creators. When Mission Ridge had its 50th birthday in 2016, the three Wenatchee artists wanted to make a present for their local ski area. It grew a little bit out of proportion in our backyard, maybe with the addition of more friends and possibly a, maybe one beer too far on the idea, but it grew larger and larger. One thing was certain. It was pretty much always going to be It was Yeti. always the Yeti. They come to this Yeti thing honestly. Zeb owns Lamolo Cafe and Deli in downtown Wenatchee. It's named for a Mission Ridge double diamond run and has this guy hanging from the ceiling. The crew built their big beast in a garage. To attach the ton of truck chains that make him hairy, Casey learned to weld. But there are hundreds of small welds on that Yeti, so it was really essential that we all kind of took part in attaching his furry coat. Finally, in September 2019, the Yeti was ready to move to his permanent home in the mountains and become the 11-foot-tall monster he was always meant to be. And I will say that the couple of days of installing him at the top of Mission Ridge were some of the best days of the office ever. Bringing this project to completion, it was so rewarding. Just, just to be up there and to see him standing. Now that these artists are done with their work, Mother Nature continues the project. Oh, I, I think it's just, it's very interesting to see how he changes from, you know, week to week, day to day. I like to sit back and just kind of watch people ride up to it and like, See what they have to say about it or you know if they stop and take a selfie or if it brings a smile to their face at least. I love seeing it up there. The Mission Ridge Yeti looks different every day but there's one thing about him that never changes. He's just, he's just a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs>
Red, yellow, and orange leaves dot the landscape the closer we get to Stevens Pass. It is so pretty. Yeah. And at the summit, our payoff. Stevens Pass Greenway is an easy and satisfying leaf road trip. And the best part? You get a second look on the way home. It's not hard to find Henry's art in Seattle, but now you can learn more about the artist and his art in a fun way. Today was the inaugural run of the Henry Mural Tour. So the tour is going to be a three hour tour. We got to have a busload of people. Our good friend Jose, a lovely driver. We will see at least 20 different murals. The variation and the imagination and the creativity. I think a lot of people see one mural and think, oh, I know the style of Henry. And it's not until you get out and actually get to take a look at a couple dozen different murals that you actually see all the different variation and the creativity he puts in from the different characters he creates, the variety of colorful backgrounds. On this tour, you can learn many things about Henry, like where did he paint it, that first Sasquatch in the city. Things that were created in my early days, you can see the transition of styles, narratives that kind of happen within the work. It's just been a real pleasure being able to share my art on this level with people. So you can see even just in here, we've got different styles. It's like a journal of my soul for the last couple decades. How I've survived as an artist in a big city. We were very lucky on this trip. I don't know if you have noticed, but Henry himself was our driver. Henry as our driver. Today's a special day and I'm driving. This is the one time that I'm doing it, it is today. Even though he will not be driving on the future, there will be plenty of chances on this tour to meet the artist. It's a way for me to meet people that like my artwork and share a little bit of joy with their lives. You really will understand why people here in Seattle love Henry's art. Right along 15th Ave used to be a car wash area. Henry took his inspiration from Andy Warhol and did a series of Sasquatches. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Another really wonderful place that we get to go to, Flat Stick Pub, where Henry has actually created three-dimensional characters out of foam. No matter how you connect with art on this tour, Henry wants you to get inspired. That special something that's hidden within them that they can bring out and share with the world that makes the world a better place. Imagine a nature documentary where the animals are a pack of nomadic Sasquatches. That's the premise of Sasquatch Sunset, an absurdist comedy with no dialogue, anatomically correct costumes, and surprising pathos. Directed by brothers David and Nathan Zellner. I live in the squatchiest state <laughs> in the country. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't avoid the Pacific Northwest with it if you're trying to think about Sasquatch and Sasquatch lore. Out of all of the mythical creatures in all of the world, why the Sasquatch? Well, it's the most American mythical creature, you know? Nathan also stars as the Alpha Sasquatch, meaning he was calling the shots in full costume. What is it like being directed by Bigfoot? It was normal until he would talk. Riley Keough, granddaughter of Elvis and Priscilla Presley, plays the solitary female Sasquatch. My father's from the Pacific Northwest, so I grew up with some Sasquatch stories and, uh, and was very familiar with the Sasquatch territory. Jesse Eisenberg plays a gentle Bigfoot, and Christoph Zajac Denick is the child of the group. Their days are filled with mundane tasks. What were you actually eating when you have giant ferns that you're uh, chewing well, on? Actual edible ferns and actual edible flowers and berries. Yeah, if, if you reach for one that, that wasn't edible, they'd say, no, 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 don't, don't eat that. Eat this instead. But don't you eat a slug too? Or Riley ate a Riley slug. Riley ate, ate a slug. A slug, I, you know, I don't want to give away the movie magic. Okay. There was a real slug involved, I'll say that. <laughs> And that's hardly the most shocking part. They do everything animals do, but in human-like forms, which can be incredibly uncomfortable to watch. A lot of the humor in this movie comes from the fact that you feel like you're watching like kind of relatable characters and then they see a road and they feel the need to like pee all over the road. And so it's this really funny juxtaposition of like relating to them and also kind of being really put off by a lot of what they do. <laughs> 
Sasquatch Sunset will repel some audiences and enchant others. But there's no question it's a one-of-a-kind film that, like the mythical creatures it depicts, must be seen to be believed. Thanks so much for joining us. To find more of our content, head to our website, king5evening.com.